Today I'm gonna to be unboxing the press kit for Intel's new Alder Lake CPUs as well as a bunch of other stuff and I'm not even gonna apologize for it because sure this video might be fluffy and just showing you stuff and not actually able to show you any performance numbers or installation or anything like that. But damn it, I'm just kind of excited for this launch. According to all the early leaks and rumors, it seems like Intel does have something good going with their new Alder Lake hybrid CPU architecture. And I've got kind of a four part thing going on today. So I'm gonna start with the reviewer's kit with the CPUs. I have several packages from ASUS that I have to assume include motherboards. This one says ROG Maximus Z690 Hero. So that's another reviewer's kit there. I've got DDR5 memory kits from G-Skill and Corsair. And then I've got a bunch more stuff from Corsair that's gonna be going into a build, my build for this month, that yes, will eventually also be a giveaway. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by MSI's Spatium M470 and M480 SSDs, featuring blazing fast PCI Express 4.0 performance, up to 5,000 megabytes per second reads and 4,400 megabytes per second writes for the M470, and up to 7,000 megabytes per second reads and 6,800 megabytes per second writes for the M480. The drives use Fizon controllers and are both M.2 2280 size for broad compatibility. They're available in capacities up to two terabytes, and MSI provides a five-year warranty. So for more on these high-speed NVMe SSDs, click the M470 or M480 sponsor link in the video description. So the first thing of course is to move this big pile of boxes that I just made here. And that wasn't even everything. There's more boxes on the table behind me, but uh, let's me get out the old unboxing knife and we'll start off with this package from Intel, which is labeled Red Hot Rush, which I don't think is talking about the candy. I just think it's about getting it here in time. So right there, we got an internal package with an Intel label and I should point out um, there is Retail packaging for the new Intel processors like the 12900K and 12600K, and I believe that's what's included in this package. It is labeled Core i5K and Core i9K CPU right there, and Intel might have told us uh, what was coming. Pictures of the retail box leaked pretty early, and those actually do come with a little wafer disc like gold thing that the uh, CPU is, is contained in. And that looks kind of cool, um, but for us reviewers, Intel did this little package here, which has a nice design on the front. Little magnet flap down here, flips open to reveal. Ooh, look at that. Processor is, uh, I was expecting it to be a little bit smaller than this, but I guess, <laughs> but this appears to be our blow up die shot of uh, the CPU itself. So so that's that's pretty cool to have that and be able to, to put it somewhere. I think it actually comes with a display. Right here, just a little stand. Oh look, and it's even got Alder Lake on the back. Ah, look at that. Did you did you know that all of Intel's code names, uh, the rule for them is that it has to be on a map. So that's why they're all named after lakes or bridges or other things like that. This is the first time I've shown the, I've seen them show like, oh look, there's the actual lake that it's named after. Well, let's go in, go in there. Bit of a tight squeeze. Oh, all right, that is, that is a bit of a tight fit to get that in there. And I've actually positioned it kind of the wrong way because it's showing you the Alder Lake side rather than the die shot side. But, uh, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to be careful with this because I don't want to scuff this thing up too much. Uh, all right, I got it I got it in there. I really had to wedge it to, to get it to go. But uh, there it is, the presentation piece. Uh, enough of that though. Where's the processors? Ah, there they are. Processors right there underneath. Similar little cardboard box packages to the, uh, the, the 11th gen uh, kit that they sent out, which, which, where'd that go? It's up there somewhere. So there is the i5 and the i9. I suppose I should take these out of their boxes as well to make this a more thorough unboxification. And all right, ta-da, there you have it. My first ever time actually physically holding these new processors that we've been hearing about for so, so long from Intel. The Core i5 12600K right there, and the Core i9 12900K right there. Let's pop the flagship 16 core unit out of its package. It has eight uh, performance cores and eight efficiency cores. And yeah, there they are. Um, the rectangular size I'd say is the biggest uh, difference here from going from previous gens to this gen, at least physically looking at the unit itself. Still has the uh, notches on the top and the bottom to make sure you slot it into the socket appropriately. I, I can't show you guys any installation or builds or anything like that today. All I can do is quickly show you the uh, processors themselves and the motherboards and stuff like that. But part of the benefit of me doing a quick unboxing video like this is that I can move on to spend the rest of the week thoroughly testing these processors to give you guys as much feedback on their performance as I can when the embargo actually lifts. So there it is, our first look at the uh, new processors. Very exciting. Next up, big box from Asus uh, with the Republic of Gamers logo there on the front, and again, a bit of a spoiler, but this says ROG Maximus Z690 Hero on the side. So there, we have the ROG logo, Republic of Gamers, 
supports 12th gen Intel Core processors Z690 chipset. And I actually opened the outer box for this right when it arrived, but I, I couldn't bring myself to do this because I wanted to save it, do it on camera for you guys. So, oops. There we go. Okay, now that opens up and there is quite interesting here. All right, we got a tab. Tab over here opens this side. Ah, and there we have our retail packaged Z690 Hero. I still wanna call it the M14H or Maximus 14 Hero, but wait, there's more. Take a look inside. All right, what is, <laughs> this is literally an empty box that says, wait, there's more. Take a look inside and there's nothing there, okay. Oh look, how convenient. Since the uh, Intel CPUs don't come with coolers, they have included the ROG Ryujin Region 2 360, all in one liquid cooling solution. They included this special note here, so I thought I should open this and read it. Okay. <laughs> All right, I thought this was a handwritten note to myself, but it actually says, hi tech power up. Thank you for reviewing the Z690 motherboard. Now, um, I, I wanna point out, I received two of these packages and Asus hit me up the next day and they're like, uh, we had some uh, maybe logistics confusion. So I think probably the other box that I got is the one that's meant for me. And I just accidentally opened the tech power up one. So tech power up, I've got your card here. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what you should do. I'm not giving it back. That actually is fairly amusing to me. Uh, they're supposed to be doing a pickup for the other box that got shipped here like today. So hopefully tech power up will also get there. Uh, Maximus Z690 Hero pretty quick as well. Because I have so many things to unbox today, I'm not gonna give you guys like a full complete uh, unboxing of this particular board here, but I did wanna at least pull it out of the packaging so we could take a quick closer look at it. And there it is, it's a hefty board right off the bat. I guess I can at least deflower it a little bit and peel off the plasticky bits from the IO ports and all that. More plastic here, more plastic here. Very satisfying. So at first glance, we have what appears to be a pretty substantial power delivery setup here. Of course, I can't tell what the components are, are underneath that or anything, but at least we got lots of cooling on that. This window here, which I'm pretty sure is gonna have some RGB that shines through it once it turns on. Our four DDR5 dim slots, we got supplemental power here uh, that's probably gonna be uh, assisting with overclocking support. Lovely surface mounted components up in here like a debug LED start button flex key. And yeah, so this is the board I'm gonna be using for my initial benchmarks and everything. No backplate on this particular model, but uh, they have higher end RG boards that I'm sure will implement something like that because that's kind of a popular feature more recently. But Asus always does a really good job with their motherboards, which is why they charge so much for them. A couple more packages from Asus here. Big one, little one, big one, little one. Let's, uh, let's do the big one first. Okay, slice, slice, oh. -ho. How surprising, more motherboards. We got the Prime Z690-A. We have this one, this is the Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi-Fi D4. This motherboard has DDR4 memory slots instead of DDR5. This might interest some of you guys who are early adopters of this platform, although we should wait until we can do some testing between DDR4 and DDR5 support. But the DDR5 memory uh, is anticipated to be quite expensive, so uh, you could get this board, run it with DDR4. The only real downside there is that if you ever wanted to upgrade to DDR5, you would need a new motherboard. And lastly, we have the ROG Strix Z690-E gaming Wi-Fi, just, just to make sure I, I, can, I can set up Asus Z690 motherboards in whatever configuration I possibly want to. I guess I should also check what's in this box since it is the last of the Asus items that were sent over. And hey, look, it appears to be another one of these. Oh, two Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi Fi D4 motherboards. I'm guessing one of these should go to Tech Power Up. Much as I would like to pour over the details of all those motherboards, I, I do have a, a bit of a schedule to try to maintain today. So I'm going to move on and, all right, uh, this package was sent over by my friends at G-Skill. They were like, hey, DDR5. And I was like, yep, DDR5. So they were like, we'll send you some, all bubble wrapped and stuff. This is the G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB. So the new design for their Trident Z memory, they're calling it Trident Z5, the five, is for DDR5, if, if you didn't figure that out. This particular kit is DDR5 6000, two 16 gig sticks, cast latency 36, 36, 36, 76. Let's pop them out here and take a quick first look. 
All right, so I popped out a Trident Z Neo. Uh, this is basically their Trident Z current design with the RGB across the top. And uh, it looks like these are a little bit slimmer. They have kind of a slimmer profile. Definitely a bit slimmer profile. Definitely uh, it's just some different design choices, a little bit more of a, there's a bit of a groove that kind of runs along the top and, and, and slants up. I'd say they look pretty nice. And I will say this kit looks like it doesn't have sharp edges that might cut me, which uh, has been an, an issue with some of the G-Skill kits I've worked with in the past. They looked really nice but um, you know, sharp edges, like the Trident Z not so much, but they had a DDR3 kit that was totally, totally danger in that way. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is that these are keyed differently, DDR4 and DDR5. So note that there is a notch that is in a different location. So you cannot take a DDR5 slotted motherboard with DDR5 dim slots and just pop in a DDR4 stick. That's not gonna work. So like I said, if you get a DDR4 motherboard, you can use your existing memory, but if you ever wanna switch to DDR5, you will need to switch to a DDR5 capable motherboard. Right, we're getting through this. Uh, I believe all the packages I have remaining are from Corsair. And like I said, I have been planning a build with Corsair. Actually, they're, they're gonna sponsor a build uh, that I'm going to be putting together pretty soon after the uh, actual launch of Alder Lake. And if you guys aren't aware, I don't do that many sponsored videos on my channel. I try to avoid them. But when I do do a sponsored video, I always say, I'll do a sponsored video for you as long as I can also do a giveaway for my viewers. And that was the deal for this as well. So Corsair, if you didn't know, also makes DDR5, well, they make memory. And so they also have DDR5, DDR5 memory. They sent over this DDR5 32 gigabyte kit. It's got the new Corsair yellow. It seems to be DDR5 5200 megahertz. And this is from their Vengeance line, which uh, I believe does not have the RGBs on it, which is okay. But these do look like they have, again, a new heat spreader design. I'm happy with that. I'm happy they're not just taking their existing designs for DDR4, even though, you know, they're, they're the DDR4 designs are perfectly adequate. But since I'm told that the DDR5 memory is going to be more expensive, you're paying a little bit more, and you might as well get a new design, something that stands out a little bit over the last generation. So we can see the Vengeance design. We got the Corsair triangles that get smaller and they get bigger, and that's kind of cool. Got the Corsair, Corsair sales logo going across the top. And yeah, yet again, it's a DDR5 32 gig kit. So 16 gigs per module, 5200 megahertz, Cast latency 38, 38, 38, 84. So there is a quick look at Corsair's Vengeance DDR5 memory. So that kit quite literally arrived this morning, uh, like just in time for me to, to do this unboxing video. So I'm not sure if there's going to be more memory in here, but I believe the memory that we're planning to use for the giveaway build is, is going to be uh, Dominator Platinum memory. And I believe that's what we're gonna be seeing a lot more of as I continue this unboxing is, uh, parts and stuff for that build. So um, that's uh, that's still underway. We're figuring stuff out. What, what the heck is it? Oh, look, these are all cable combs. So we have a power supply cable kit, which makes me think maybe there will be a power supply in one of these other boxes. Corsair does do power supplies. All right, and of course we're gonna have RGB. So a commander core is a great core unit to, to connect all your RGB stuff to. And whereas not all RGB solutions are created equal and they all have pros and cons, I will say that Corsair, if you if you decide I'm gonna go Corsair and you invest in their platform, uh, their IQ software and the control they have all together, it's not gonna be the least expensive way to set, to do like an RGB setup. But once you get it all all put together and they have like the stuff you can put on top of your desk and, and whatnot, it does become a very cohesive solution that has a good software that connects to it. It's, it's, it's a little complicated software. It takes a little bit of a learning curve, but you can do a lot with it rather than some of the builds I've done where I get stuff together and I'm like, all right, I've got th three different sort of RGB families here. So I have to stick to a very basic pattern. I'm getting ahead of myself though. So this is just our power supply and our sleeved cable kit for this build. This is the new RM1000X. These are the sleeved cables that come along with it. And oh, these uh, strike me as very nice quality. No. Uh, sleeving or anything to be seen on the uh, termina terminals there. Full kit of replacement sleeved cables right there. Cable comb kits, which is also nice if you're gonna do the training and you want everything to look nice and pretty. And the RM1000X power supply unit itself, which is fully modular, 80 plus gold, 1000 1, watts of power, which is more than enough for the build we're putting together, which is also going to feature an RTX 3090, by the way. All right, I need to make a pile. I need to make a build pile for this stuff and set it aside to make sure that uh, none of it goes missing. And then we have these two longer boxes. I uh, don't, we, we are getting a case as well. I think we're going with the 5000X. They have a 7000X as well, but the 7000X is, it's really large. 
And it didn't really seem necessary for this particular build, so I believe what they have sent over is all-in-one liquid coolers, yay. Oh, this is a new one. Super chilled H150i Elite LCD. So Corsair now also has a all-in-one liquid cooler with an LCD. It's a 2.1 inch IPS LCD screen, 480 by 480 resolution. And I'm also not really surprised that I, I have two of them yet again, hooray. So it's always useful to have backups. And I'm pretty sure one of these was sent over for the Alder Lake launch because all the cooler manufacturers want us to use their cooler. Um, but I, I actually might use this because having the same cooler to cross compare is useful. And the LGA 1700 CPUs, as you saw, Slightly different shape than the uh, older ones, the LGA 115X or the LGA 1200 CPUs. And some of the early reports I've read about indicate that um, you actually do want a cooler block that's designed for that newer socket. So I'm gonna be doing uh, just a bunch of testing and benchmarking work all this week and uh, anywhere that I can establish parity or equality from one test bed to another, I wanna go for it. So using the same cooler is a good way to get uh, good thermal performance numbers between uh, two solutions, for example. If I, so one of these units could be used for my Alder Lake uh, test bed. One of them could be popped onto, I, I'm pretty sure this also has an AM4 mount. Should I double check that? TR4, all right. Yeah, I was 99% sure, but uh, this already, this has a thread ripper uh, bracket on it and stuff. So yeah, this these support AMD sockets as well. But now I get to make that tough call about which cooler to use. Um, so, I don't know, by the time you guys see this, I will have already made that decision and probably be halfway through my testing. So, uh, don't, don't, you can leave me your comments in the comments as always, and I will check them out. But chances are I won't be able to take your input as far as my decision goes, but I'm kind of leaning towards using this. Or I guess I could just keep that tech power up box that they sent over and use both of the Asus Ryujin uh, coolers. It's a tough choice. I don't, I don't really know which way I'm gonna go. But one thing I do know is that I'm very excited to be testing out all this new hardware. So in case you guys didn't realize, Intel has an event starting today. I believe it goes today and tomorrow. So there's a lot of new details about the processors that's coming out. Some of it is rumored stuff that is now being confirmed. But since this was just an unboxing video, I'll post some links in the description to some other articles and reading if you guys want to know some of the further details that was confirmed about Alder Lake, the 12900K, the 12600K. But definitely stay tuned to my YouTube channel to see my test results for Alder Lake. I'll be uh, posting at least a couple videos on that, as well as the aforementioned build that Corsair is sponsoring, and we're going to be using an MSI motherboard and graphics card for that system. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button on your way out, and again, check the video description for links down below if you'd like some further reading about what information was revealed today about Alder Lake. I'm going to get to work with some testing. This is probably going to be my only video for this week, aside from tech news on Sunday, which I will still be bringing to you guys, so I can spend as much time as possible testing. I have lots of work to do, so I'm going to get to it. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.